a bit of an intro. Wow, this guy is a character, Simo. Wagatorus is crazy, but he's up there with me. Um, he's a former Great Britain international. Won a Challenge Cup with Hull FC in 2005. I had the pleasure to play alongside him uh, at Casford Tigers. I, w- I would name all his professional clubs, but look, Simo, look how many <laughs> clubs are there. Look how many Just quickly clubs. quickly run through them, quickly run, run through them. Run through them. Do- uh, made his uh, professional debut, his Unsel Hawks, Doncaster, Halifax, Cast Tigers, Crusaders, Rugby League, Barra Raiders, Limoux in France, uh, Workington Town, Whitehaven, Atherston Roosters, Termat, London Broncos, Keithley Cougars, and there'll be a couple more in there, and that is Fax. Jamie Fackery. Fax, how are you, mate? You're looking good. I'm very well, mate. A bit ropey from last night, but um, <laughs> all, all is well. You came and I fed you, mate. I fed you. I cooked you up some brisket, some lamb, some Yorkshire's, bit of cake for pudding. You're feeling good, but you need to put a bit of size on, mate. I've got to say, you're looking, uh, you're looking leaner than lean. Yeah, mate. I got wages today. It's a disappointing 14 stone 10. Um, not like the big old days when I was uh, 16 and odd. For but, me, the big question yeah. is Jamie Fackery putting the boots on again next year. Mm. Everyone needs to know facts. Everyone needs to know because obviously there's a charity game going on. Um, I will take part in that. Um, I don't know when it's getting released. You've probably heard about that. You'll be in that, won't you? Um, At the minute, no. But if injuries come along on that, you never know. You know, sometimes I just get the urge. I just need to get out there and try and hurt somebody. You know, you know (laughs) it is. You're 41 years young. You look great for 41. We're going to speak to you later on about the secret of a long career. you have been blessed with a very good injury record and mm. is there any like kind of magical like formula you take or anything you do that keeps you in such good nick and gives you so many minutes well i did i did get um, a bad injury back in a uh, 202 wasn't it wag uh yeah. 201 i broke my arm and obviously um i had two or three years where i was only playing nine games a season you know it was a frustrating time at cast and uh, they got relegated didn't they that year but obviously then uh all fc came in for me and uh, let me have the play out so I was always thinking at back of my head, I thought, you know what, I've had a couple of bad years with injuries, uh, just with my uh, broken arm, so I, I was a, a naughty guy, you know, like swinging the arm, I looked to like, uh, you know, I just, back in the day, I was a very hot-headed, you know, I was a uh, loose cannon, as I say, uh, on and off the pitch. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I always thought in back of my mind, I thought, you know what, I've had a few bad years here, because I, I noticed that most players retired at 32, 33, some even 30, and I thought, I'm going to try and go a bit longer, do you know what I mean? Well, you've certainly done that. You're 41 now, and there's no. Re- you, you retired, I think, last three years. Is it? You've retired. Well, I retired, but then I got. I did. I retired, but then ended up playing <laughs> at the start of the season because a coach had phoned me and said, "Look, it's not even just about the playing, is it? You know, like getting the morale around the team, the banter. You know, as soon as I walk in, I like that changing room up there. You know, what it's like wag. You know, is that what you miss most, Max? Oh, if mate, anyone yeah. asks you, the big crowds don't bother you as much. Yeah. It's the boys. No, mate, hundred percent. You know, you, you make you make friends for life. You know, we was on about this today, weren't we? Saying how many yeah. how many people do you meet through rugby league? How many great guys are out there? You, know, you see him on field, and people think, "Oh, is this? Is is that?" You know, calling him. But then they meet him face to face. They're like, "We didn't think you were like that. You, you're you you good guys. You good people. You know." And it is, mate. That's that's what you miss most, isn't it? What what year did you start playing? <clears throat> professional or amateur? Uh, professional. Professional. I remember debut in 1996. 1996. Yeah. 1996. <laughs> wow. 96. <laughs> right. Yeah. Talk to me about rugby. That's the first year of Super League. So yeah. that, they're back, that's like 25 years, 25 yeah, years. Yeah. So tell me what rugby was like then and mm. how it compares, now how yeah. you feel about the game yeah. and how you've seen it develop over that time. I'll tell you my honest opinion. I think it was tougher than it is now. I think it's soft now. That's my opinion. Not because the guys who are playing the sport, because the people who are running it, you know, what they've, what they've banned and what you can't do, you know. I don't think it's anything to do with the players because they're all tough players. I just think over years, it's, it's got a bit softer and softer. It has, on it, you know. Uh, it's playing go a bit deeper so it's, no, it's, it, when you say that what what exactly do you mean exactly just like getting rid of like the shoulder barge and the you know I don't know that aggression it just looked like the aggression's gone out of game a bit for me do you know and I speak to a lot of people and they think the same they don't think it's like it used to you know with all the rule changes and you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that or even if you hit high and it slips up a bit, it's a penalty straight away, and then players are scared to do some. Or you know, it just it, just, it puts it back your head, doesn't it? Do you as know, a young I mean? Jamie Fackery, who did you look up to as as a prop fax? When I played, um, obviously when I first started out, I, I started at a late age. Obviously, I started at fifteen. I signed professional at sixteen. Do you know, I wasn't known for being a good player. How, how, how did that happen then? I was known for being tough. No, it was just so, weird. Fifteen year old. Tell yeah. me back to the fifteen year old Jamie yeah. Fackery. Where were your first training session? How yep. did you get involved with the sport? It was at uh, Alton Raiders, a uh, good friend now. Uh, I've saw him the other day for the first time in a couple of years, uh, Neil Grice. He says, why did it come down to uh, Alton Raiders? Um, 
my dad on my captain we haven't won in 33 games <laughs> so, you know because i was not like one of the in my school so it wanted a few hard plays down so i thought you know what i'll get me sent down there so i went down and my first game was under bank away and i scored three tries and we won the first game in a year and like i didn't know what i'm doing they just give me the ball i just run, run as hard as i could you know what i like for running ball then and i was running through them i thought god i like i like this Do you know and then um yeah it was under bank away and, and i'll never forget two cows you know, like making love or something feel the night. Grassroots rugby league, yeah, yeah, spiders. Yeah. And I'll just never forget. And I was like 15 Is buzzing. That the way out. Underbank. Uh, underbank. Yeah, and yeah. I'm seeing two, two cows in the field, like, Ooh, and I'm like, what? You know, when you just remember little things from that. And I thought, oh. and, I was just, and again, that way, lad straight, I was up. Do you know what I mean? And that way, I never never missed after that like proper day I just want to go down all the time we've got to mention as well today you mentioned yeah. Alton Club uh, really sad news today in rugby league a legend gets thrown around yeah. too often yeah. in, in sport in general but Rocky Whitehead one of the most passionate um, giving men I've met yeah. in, in the sport he started Rocky's Giants at, he, I think he was the first person to ever do tots that I came across tots rugby bought some fantastic players through Ryan Hall so many players yeah. through through his system at Alton Raiders. He sadly lost his life over the last 24 hours. Um, thoughts with his family and everyone down at, mm. at Alton Raiders. Genuinely one of the nicest blokes I've met. We've done camps at Alton for the last five, six years and he's so full of enthusiasm. about that. He's been in rugby I, a couple of times. I've just seen a video on Twitter with him... Uh, uh, dressed up uh, singing as Elvis yeah. that's the kind of guy yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky was uh, I had the pleasure to meet Rocky a lot of times he did a lot of stuff in the community the schools uh, absolutely inspiration uh, yeah. you talk about the players he's brought up uh, I've been speaking to Ryan Hudson today uh, yeah. and he, he met Ryan Hudson he believes uh, four and a half years old uh, Young Rocky, he was taking him in his back of his, uh, it was his three wheeler yellow car at the time. And <laughs> he's got loads of memories in the players and the juniors. Great bloke. Yeah, he's he's going to be a massive loss is, to man. the rugby league family and, and the grassroots. So, yeah, send all my love to family and friends. Yeah, yeah. Not, nothing but love and respect to everyone at Alton. And we're thinking of you at this yeah. tough time. Going back, so you play a year at under, under 16s at Alton. Uh, and you get 15s, signed 15s, under 15s yeah. and you get signed at 16 straight away yeah so <laughs> tell us about that signing because is it true what was the question <laughs> let's let's get, let's go let's straight get... to the questions because <laughs> we go. had some amazing questions for you today <clears throat> right so the question uh, came from uh, bert8150 on instagram is it true you signed for, uh, for a mountain bike a for mountain your first bike. contract at unslet right let's get this straight now yeah um, yeah, obviously, um, I was this, I was telling Simo the story before, wasn't I? Um, <laughs> obviously, I was supposed to sign for Sheffield Eagles, who was in the Super League, and um, I promised I'd sign for them. And then once it came to the door with mountain bikes, I, I couldn't refuse, you know. Valley <laughs> <laughs> Race. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, what were the bikes? I'll the tell bike? you the truth now, it was a mountain bike, it was green and orange, and I got a, also a green and orange tracksuit saying Super League trainee and £3,000 as well. So that, that made a bit more, but there was three k on top of that, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I got a mountain bike. <laughs> and, and you killed it. It's a, a, a constant theme throughout your career is I always put killing it <laughs> on and off field. Hashtag killing it. You killed it because you, have you got a record? You scored like nine tries with it in oh, one yeah, game. Yeah, just in the academy, just just a steady nine, mate. You know, I've, you know what I mean. <laughs> just come with me. Come with me. This call in it. Just come with yeah. me. Yeah, seven in first half, two in second. I just came off after that. It was just getting too easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Batty said uh, yeah. on Insta today yeah. says, "What happens when when you, when people go with you?" Well, no, don't they? Just uh, they score a try or they get put through. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when it, I'm the hooker at Cassie and Fax. He wanted every carry. I oh, had to yeah. buzz him the ball. They were yeah. even getting in between me and Danny Orr and Alpha. Yeah, yeah. Give me the ball. Give me the ball, wagon. I'll make it happen. Offload Alpha. Where are you? Where are you? Um, I yeah. cannot knock that yeah. guy's passion and the love for rugby. It can come across. It, it's got, till I knew him, yeah, I thought, yeah. wow, who's this guy? We're up singing. We went to La Santa oh, Cass. Yeah. It yeah, were yeah. a great team bonding. Oh. And I thought, who is this guy? He stood up on his chair and said, I'm the best player in this room. And <laughs> you like Adrian Battles, Dale Fritz, and these. Yeah. These. Tell us about that. What do you remember about that? No, I, 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 I do remember getting a punch check. Obviously, being a new player, you've got to sing and stuff, aren't you? Yeah. That's, that's when I realised I could sing well, as well. Right in front like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's when I realised I could sing. So Can you um... give us a song. Give us a song. <laughs> yeah, come on, <laughs> facts. <laughs> that singing that night were unreal. Hey, where did we go? And days when the rains came, down in a hollow, playing a new game, a laughing and a running. Hey, hey, skipping and a jumping. In the misty morning, for 
That'll do. <laughs> awesome <laughs> awesome that facts, good? but yeah, uh, he made an impression straight away. The kid can play. The kid could play. Yeah, obviously, looking back, you've never ever been short of confidence. Um, which, what would you say will be your happy place in in terms of clubs you've played for, mm. and also you've played for so many clubs? That which are the best set of fans? You know, I've got I've got to say, playing at Leeds on a Friday night in front of nineteen twenty thousand, depending on who played, sometimes there were twenty four there against Bradford, St Helens. I've got to say, Leeds at home on a Friday night, you can't. I don't think it can be beat. the atmosphere there. You just walk out, the tingle you get, the drums are going off. It's it's unbelievable. But for an away game, I've, I've got to say, all the Seas fans, um, unbelievable. Met taking thousands, they were so oh, so loud. Do you believe that were your best rugby playing at Leeds Rhinos? Facts. I believe. I believe 2005, my best rugby league career season I ever had. Um, was it was it Hull? At Hull FC in 2005. Challenge Cup win. Yeah, uh, the Challenge Cup win. Um, Tri Nations. Tri Nations, yeah, and um, obviously made the uh, the Super League dream team. You know, capped off by I didn't miss a game compared to the two years prior when I kept breaking my arms. You know, what were the changing mindset? What because we spoke yeah. about it before. Yeah, we did. Yeah, um, as I say, uh, all I say that year signed a couple of my international big big names like Steve Kearney, Richard Swain, and obviously they they, they, they put me with um, with Kearney. You know, I trained with him all the time. I room with him. I just I just I just watched how it worked, and then I, I didn't. I won't lie to you. I want a big rugby league fan knowing who was who and who won. Um, when I started watching videos of how good this guy was, I was like memorized. I was like, I couldn't believe how good he was. You know. And that were it. I just, I like just pushed myself. Like oh, just a legend, you know. If you thought you're doing wrong or doing something wrong, he'd, he'd tell you. But not just me. Looked up to him. All the team was just like he was like a, a superstar, you know. Like Ali Lautita signing for Leeds. He was a superstar. One in like you know, everyone just like memorised with him. It was, it was just like that. It was. And like I say, I'd, it's probably the hardest I've ever trained in my life, you know, because I'm I was quite a chunky guy. I want to wag you know that, yeah. you know. And I, I think I got into real like like good good shape. And like I said, when I came to Leeds in two or six, two or seven. I, I, I played some decent rugby then as well you know I, I tuned quite a bit down at Leeds I, I think I played more back row at Leeds so you, you've played at Hull you've had that amazing year tell, tell us a bit about before we talk about Leeds tell us a bit about uh, that Tri-Nations so you're winning the Challenge Cup what were, what are your memories of Wembley? no the, that one obviously I did play at Wembley as well but yeah. that, it wasn't at Wembley that one that was at Cardiff. Cardiff it was a full house I can't remember if roof was closed like 77,000 what were it like walking oh. out tell us, tell us that day with the family I can, I can remember how that how did your family feel about it all well obviously my mum and dad was on a holiday so they weren't there so <laughs> <laughs> obviously they'd already booked to Turkey I think they'd never been abroad so I said look you'll get, you get yourselves <laughs> off but I don't really like my mum and dad coming to watch me play anyway I, yeah. I, I, I like to be I'm like a loner me I like you know it's just weird I don't like them coming to watch me but the they used to come anywhere, start fighting in crowd with people, and that, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I get remembered every year by you and Dow's my mate, yeah. because that picture keeps circulating. Yeah. Uh, you, Gary Carvel, yeah. uh, Dow's oh, yeah. on Twitter every year, Challenge yeah. Cup win. I always yeah. say to him, you won a Challenge Cup, Wagger? Yeah. I said, no, no, I haven't. I won a veterans yeah. competition in Dubai yeah. with Jordan Jack, that's yeah. it. Tell us yeah. what, I, as, I say, as, as I walked out on field, because... Um, I'd never like experienced anything like it, you know, because obviously I had a couple of bad years with Brock and Arm. Then it was at Halifax. They were struggling with money and stuff because they, they, they weren't going real well. And then to come to a big team, I met that final that year. I just remember walking up the field, all fireworks going off. Is it that Catherine um, Jones or Jenkins. What, Jenkins, Jenkins. Jenkins singing opera? Absolutely, world there. She's like, stunning. Oh, she's she's so I, yeah, well, beautiful. she was sat night of me. I thought, I'm going to slip at number, but I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I had a bird at the time, you know what I'm like? But um, yeah, and I was walking on pitch, all lights going off, and the shivers down my spine. I was like, but you just feel like 100, you know what I mean? You just feel invincible, don't you? Oh, mate, what a feeling. And, you know, and then after, the, all my, I saw loads of my friends from school that I hadn't seen for ages. They all had t shirts, you know, with, with a picture of me on and stuff. No way. They were mental, mate. I couldn't believe it. Like, loads in crowd and that. And then, like, I walked around for about an hour afterwards. And even like uh, the Leeds fans, because I'm a Leeds lad, they were real being nice to me, shaking my hand, crying. And then uh, you, you know Sean Penkovich. Yeah, Penkovich. His dad stuck two hundred pound in my pocket. Oh, and says, get, yeah, he's mate. And he says, "There's a get, get yourself some drinks." I went, "Don't be stupid." He went, "No, there's two hundred quid." I couldn't believe it. He went, "Glad but, you bit them Leeds scum." <laughs> win bonus. Win yeah, bonus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, plus that 15 gun. Yeah, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any stories from that night when you won the Challenge Cup final facts, what you could tell without lying, taking anyone lying. down? <laughs> well, I, I won't lie to you. Uh, I'm not naming no names, but yeah, I think I got in at six in the morning. No, I think this is what happened actually. Obviously, I was still with uh, one of my exes at the time, and she was being a miserable get. So I went back to the hotel. She fell asleep. I sneaked back out till six in the morning. 
But then as I'm coming home at six in the morning, there's a mattress hanging out one at windows. <laughs> I can't, you know it, what, don't you? <laughs> and um, it just all kicked off, mate. And then the bus drive home was insane, mate. It was just, well, I can't even tell you what we're going on on there. But um, yeah, it was just, it was mental, mate. Great times. <laughs> You just that's what I mean. It's just how, that's the things you miss. How did how did you end up at Leeds then? So what what was that? So yeah. you go to so let's talk about Tri Nations. Yeah, yeah. You go to Tri Nations. Yeah. Where were you when you got the call to say you were being called up? Fuck, mate, this is embarrassing. I, you know what? I was at all. <laughs> I was at, um. I was at the ground uh, in the club shop, and I got a phone call, and I and I said to someone, I went, "Oh, this has been my call for Great Britain," and it was. <laughs> mate, I'm on that. Killing it, went, killing it. I went, yeah, mate. I already know, mate. What, what, what what's my room number? <laughs> Yeah, but mate, yeah, I was pretty confident, you know, because if like I, they picked everything on stats and stuff, I thought they did anyway, and I knew, and I would top on everything on stats, you know, like for a prop. Yeah. And and then I thought I, I thought I might, and I was on training squad anyway, and I thought oh, I better get in, and I did, I got in, you know. That must have been, is that is that one of the biggest honours you've had? Yeah, it, it's a good feeling, you know. Yeah, it, to it, put it, that it, Great Britain shit on. There's not is. many done it. Yeah, to sing that um, national anthem, I don't even know what words to. Yeah, it was like um, <laughs> <laughs> just babbling words, but yeah, my first um, game was at Wigan against Australia. Do you know, like full outs and that. I remember it raining like mad and that. And I thought, well, I'll admit it. You know, you just think, don't you? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you've only got to look at the personnel they had in the GB squad Stuart Fielding in the props, Jamie Peacock, Adrian Morley, Nick Fozard. Mm. Uh, amongst yourself, you must have mm. uh, uh, looked up and admired a lot of these guys as well. Well, obviously, I've played against them like Ian Run quite a few of them. Do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. only what? One, one Jamie and where? where? <laughs> <laughs> no, what mentioned that? No, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, Nah, like I say, we had a really good squad that year. You know, we, we were unlucky not to win it. To be fair, you know, we, we pumped uh, New Zealand, and I think Australia beat us by two points in one game, and then beat us by six in another. Some of the pipped us again. You know, they, they, yeah. always, they hung on until end, didn't they? And then they always got that last try, didn't they? You know, and but um, and then I think New Zealand ended up winning uh, winning it. They beat Australia twenty four 0 in the final. But I remember the year before, uh, I'd, I'd had the Brock and Amos at Castleford, and I went to watch the final. I think it was Great Britain Australia, and Australia hammered Great Britain by fifty at Ellen Road. And I says in my head, I says, I'll be playing for Great Britain next year. Are we? And, and then I did, I got picked. That's amazing. Nah, no, it's mad that. Who do you believe the best prop facts you've played against? The toughest. Played the against? Best. Yeah. In in your position throughout your career. I, I know it's a tough question. Because uh, you, pl- you play it. Do you, do you know what? And what Wait, made them so good? This, and what made yeah. them so good? Do you know good? what? This is weird. Like, I've got a few. Like, there's a lot of good players, but like, oh, I see was, oh, I can't tackle. It's hard to tackle for me. Like, Gas Carvel was so hard to tackle for me, like because he's a really big lad in it. He could yeah, he could yeah. come to ball hundred mile now and bush you. But mate, Paul King was like one of the best props. I you know that mate. Yeah. His ability, obviously, he liked to drink and yeah. If he if he had had the attitude of some of them players, mate, he'd probably been the best prop ever to walk, mate. The skill he had, you know, wagon oh, is. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I signed yeah. at All FC. A dog's body, and, oh, yeah, honestly. It, I says, oh, we'll have to, Sam was shot. Uh, he says, oh, jump in with me, uh, yeah. Wagger. Like, I must have had 10, 20, 10 20, 6 20, in the yeah. sandwich. Shot. I've got my head out. Couldn't breathe out window like <laughs> that. And uh. as soon as we got back, we're doing Malcolm's up and down mm. field. I thought, mm. how can this I, guy do this? But listen to this. Listen to this. So, <laughs> the skill he had. That's what I mean. It, it was the fittest guy you'll ever meet in your life. But when it came to playing, he could play 80 minutes. How weird is that? Couldn't even run up an hill. Yeah. How mad he, he couldn't, could he? Uh, apparently, listen to his story as well. Apparently, when he got picked for um, England against France, so it wasn't like the full great when it was England. Apparently, he was in the toilet before they played France in the toilet smoking, <laughs> having a cigarette at half-time. Having a dart. There's <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah. a few lads who, who do like a dart. We're going to mm. get into a, a bit of the, the honesty box. We do a bit of yeah. feature called honesty box every yeah. every week. But before that, let's have give us three more questions North here, DJ Matty North behind uh, the cameras. Uh, three, and you've got to answer honestly. It's all about honesty this show without getting anyone into trouble, too much trouble. <laughs> so, I've had some great questions uh, through this week. Uh, this one comes from Jody Toom. Is it, it says, Is it true you can slut drop lower than Patrick Swayze? <coughs> well, a lot of people know I'm, uh, I'm known for going out on a night out once I get a bit drunk. I think I'm 15 again. and um, <laughs> Start um, smacking my face and doing a slut drop, do you know. Um, you kill the worm as well, can't you? Caterpillar. <laughs> oh, can't. <laughs> Depends how many birds are there in skirts, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, um, nah, yeah, I'm not for doing a slut drop on a slap around face. Uh, but um, I think Kelvin Fletcher started that off with me yeah. um, when we used to have his nights out around Leeds, you know, come and see you when uh, DJing and stuff and yeah, that. You did. We started smacking each other on face and uh, doing a slut drop. It just it took off from there, really. On uh, at Burge's wedding. Uh, oh my god, that was a good night. Uh, Burge's wedding. Kel- Kelvin did a slut drop yeah. and split his trousers. <laughs> right, right, right now. Well, I'm at this. Up. When I was at London Broncos in two, uh, 2016, 2017, we was at Ealing Broadway uh, with a few guys and that. And uh, again, anybody will tell you about this. I do a slut drop. 
ripped up back in that dinner. <laughs> uh, uh, mate, honestly, walking around with no, uh, everything hanging out on that, I had to like get get a uh, train back home or something, and, and then meet all the lads later because we just played a game and won or something. I think I just got mad at match against Lee <laughs> and um, come back out and got changed again. You know, some more jeans, but yeah, ripped back end out of them. <laughs> Slow dropping. Gives another one. Uh, this one comes from Ricky Fairfield on Instagram. Um, who's inspired your hairstyles over the years? You've, he's had some beauties. He's had let's some be beauties, honest. Hasn't he? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You just you, you see um, players don't you with different silly haircuts, and then you, you just jump on board. You know, even footballs and stuff. But um, what's one, been your favourite haircut? I liked it when I I used to have my weekend at Hull, and I used to dye it white blonde. But then when it grew back through a bit, so it was black and white. It looked nice, light black and white. I thought it did. Probably didn't. But I'm starting to go a bit bald now, and that's why because I've dyed it that many times, it, it makes it go bald. Well, a few people have been talking about it. Yeah, it, it. I'm off on a hair transplant. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what are you actually? I'm gonna do it. Here, <laughs> But um, and then obviously at Leeds when I dyed it uh, white uh, when I dyed it blonde at Leeds I think me Jimmy Peacock a few of us did it, we did it I can't remember what we did it for but a few of us all had the uh, like white blonde yellow hair um, if you remember it, that yeah year. so we all did it I can't remember why we did it but we did it for something what motivated you as a player fax were, were it the money were it were, were it just the opportunity to play at the highest level yeah it definitely want money mate because back then mate they want thousands in it or anything um, well, it's still alright that minute one we're gonna change your life felt like that. I just love playing rugby, mate. I don't know what it was. I just want it to be the best. I want it to like do well and like break that tackle or try and score that. Try. I don't know. I just I really wanted to like every game I, I try to play. I wanted to like do the best I could. You know, I, don't, I wanted people to try and couldn't be able to tackle me or yeah, you know, something like that. I just I was really hungry. It was so weird. Yeah, it was weird. Looking um, before we go into honesty box, we'll just we'll just jump into your time at Leeds because you mentioned that's the most special time in terms of of the fans and, and what they gave you on the Friday nights. Mm. You played under Tony Smith. What was mm. Tony Smith like with you? Yeah, uh, it, you know what is with Tony? It says how it is, which I like. You know, some coaches can go round blocking that, you know. Some people can write team up board, run down the street, you know. Everyone's got their own way, but if you want to team with Tony, take you in a video session, sit you down, what you need to do, what you don't need to do. Um, in my opinion, he's one of the best coaches that I've been under. And... Um, also, Dave Plange when I was a young kid, I, I thought the same. Kind, I think in a way there was there was a, there was same kind of coach if, if you ask me, do you know. And I've always said it. Anyone ever asked me, who I thought my best coach was. Um, I, I always said Tony Smith. Do you know, it really was. And I thought I did play some of my best rugby at Leeds. You know, in between Hull and Leeds. You know, yeah. Tell us a bit. Talk us through the greatest try ever in rugby league. <laughs> You've had a couple. You've had yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. Talk <laughs> us. Which one do you reckon is your best one? Obviously, the chip and chase is um, is a good one because obviously a prop forward ain't supposed to do, do a double chip over and take full back and and, and dive on that sticks is it? You know, obviously it's just instincts and I've, I've always had the ability, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I must have practiced it hundred times in training. But um, no, it was um, Sinigi me ball on last tackle, uh, last tackle, and I just panicked and I just had a little look. Oh, full back's quite far back. I'll, I'll try a little chip, <laughs> and uh, so I chipped over and then full back came sprinting and as it came. It, it, it bounced perfect so I thought I'll put another little chip in and I did another little chip and it bounced perfect for me and I just went and I thought get in there we've just been watching it, it just fair, watched fair it. play we've just watched it yeah. not many props can score tries like that can yeah. they without, without a doubt mate do you know what do you know, I, I tried it at Wembley <laughs> final as well you know I don't know if you saw it and and I dropped it and I would have scored if I'd have caught it I chipped over like on, not, not another pass halfway line as well but it was like 38 degrees you know when it's red hot on that and I chipped over and I, and I run through and it, it just slipped out of my hands. Oh, I've had that, mate. That'd have been. Yeah. What, what's your advice to any young up and coming prop, then, Fax? Yeah, just don't be like I was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, don't chip and chase on nah, first. Do you know what? You've got to, like I say, I won't, I won't say I was gifted or anything like that because I know I won't, but I, I was always strong. I, I, was I wasn't strong at gym or anything. I was just known for having mongy strength on field. Like, I was hard to tackle. I don't know why. Um, Richard Swain did a piece when the sign was saying, I'm so glad we've got uh, Jamie Thackeray. He's the hardest man I've ever tried to tackle. Richard Swain, you know, yeah. one, of, one of the legends of the game. And I thought, yeah. oh, you know, it gave me more a bit more inspiration to like try and be stronger. Jim, I started like trying to lift heavier stuff. You know, like doing push press at under, you know, to bump people. You know, like little yeah. things in your head to give you power. For me, facts. What you had, you just believed. He mm. believed in his own ability. Yeah. No one I've ever played with has believed in <laughs> himself as much as facts. But that's not that's not him being disrespectful. Yeah. He just believed he was stronger. He was better mm. than anyone else. Yeah, that's a good trait to have Cop that confidence oh yeah I've always I've always had confidence even if I played in the the, the, the teams that are so called crap teams 
I always believe when we went on that field, we could win that team. Even some of our players were like, oh, we ain't got a chance today. I always thought we can win. We can, you know. I always thought we could win that game, even if we we're going to get bit by fifty or we will be getting bit by thirty. And I'd say, look, we score, child. We can still win this. I, I let him out. I still do it now. You've played. You've played at so many different clubs. I want to just touch on two really quickly because they, they always interest me. One is London. Yeah. What's London like as a player to live there to to be to be in that group of lads and. Do you think that Super League needs a London in it? Do you know what? I, d I do. Do you know, um, when I first went down there, I, like, I'd just come back from Australia. I did a year in Australia. You know, I was only playing bush footy. I just really went to go travel about. Obviously, my, my girlfriend at the time, who I was seeing, she was out there. So, you know, it worked out all right for me. Um, and then, um, obviously, I came home. And I, I won't lie to you, I was, I was depressed. I thought, what am I going to do with my life now? I just, I thought, and I, uh, I was 36 then, yeah. And I, I, and I, saw, in, I saw London was struggling. And um, I phoned Endo and I said, oh, do you need any players? And, he's, and he says, oh, where have you been? Have like, you been playing? I went, I've been in Australia. I said, I've, I've just played 20 games over there and scored 20 tries. <laughs> Did you actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> where says, come, were you <laughs> in Australia, facts? Because yeah. you've got a couple here. Yeah, I was playing at uh, Atherton Roosters. It's yeah. a team up in Cairns. Um, when Todd Carney got banned out of the NRL, he played there for a season. So there was a decent team. Yeah. They, I, know, I know what money he was on. Like, yeah. they, they had money, you know. Yeah. So they looked after me, to be fair. So I went up there for, uh, for a bit. And then uh, I played. I played um, down there for uh, sorry six months, and then um, I um, went down to Tumit, which is um, near Canberra. Um, obviously, it's a bit colder down there, so it was winter at the time as well. You know, and I, I, I had um, like obviously I went from playing up in Australia where it's red hot, forty degrees every day, to dry pitches, to playing in Tumit where it's like full of bog and mud. Yeah. Do you know? I don't know if you remember Brett Goldspin. He was a bit Halifax Blue Sox. No. And Robbie Beckett and them, the winger, there was um, Halifax, and he, he he was from that area, so he got me to that team. Um, and again, it, it was okay, do you know, it was just a bit wet down there for me, but um, still enjoyed it. it was a... And you go to London, so Hendo gives you the call. Yeah, Hendo phones me and says, do you want to come for a month's trial? So obviously, this isn't, if it works out, it works out. Obviously, it's going to work out, won't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, had a month down there. Um, yeah, and it, went, it did, it went really well, to be fair. We started winning a few games and stuff. And uh, if, you, if you didn't do the, if you, if you haven't passed a five minute test down there, you couldn't play. What's the five minute test tell us about? It's it. like it's like a bleep it's hard mate, it's like a bleep test thing, you keep going, keep going, keep going. I think I got in about four minutes fifty seven or something. <laughs> Eccles it's coach. Um condition, I don't know if you know Eccles used to be at Salford. Yeah. Real yeah. good block, good condition, mate. Yeah, he is. Well my and condition in my in a too, good so. in a wagger. Yeah. And um there's um there's a couple there's a player or two that, that couldn't pass it and, and <laughs> yeah. Australians were on good money, so they won't play. And I'd not trained for about a month since I met from Australia and I passed it, I couldn't believe it. I, thought, <laughs> you know, I was absolutely blowing like, but you know, I passed it and then uh, yeah, I got my chance and um, went okay. Who were you close to down there, facts, the player playing wise? Did you keep together? A lot well, obviously, I lived, I lived, uh, I lived with uh, five of the guys. So um, obviously, there was uh, uh, Reese Williams, who's now at uh, Salford. Uh, Elliot, Pepe. El yeah, Elliot Keir, he's at Salford. Trump. Yeah, is it, yeah. Um, Andy Ackers, great guy, one of my besties, um, and James Cunningham. That's, so that's a good crew. That man. A that's good a very, house, very that's that's a good great house. house. Well, Any stories from the house? Well, quite a few. What were the, what were the house back. called? What were the house called? Oh, God. What did you, did you I live next to a church. I think it was a brothel. I can't remember. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well. uh, so, um, yeah, I had some good times there. But um, yeah, Andy Ackers was in a house with um, someone else, and I had uh, Mark Offerdale. And he pestered Mark Offerdale to swap with him, so he went to go live with Niffel Stapleton in Offerdale. So Akers can come live with me. He wants to live with me. <laughs> Bless him. He's getting bed with me all the time and that. Little cute. Yeah. Little cute <laughs> yeah. He so, took him under your wing. Took him under your wing, mate. Great player. But um, yeah, mate, as I say, down in London, mate, I, I was a bit wary going. You know, you're worried about you know, underground trains and that. But after a week or two of picking it up, I loved it there, mate. I did two years there. I absolutely loved it. And what do you reckon is so important about London in terms of in terms of rugby league and, mm. and for the, the the growth of the sport? Do you think it's a necessity? I think it is, to be fair. And it broadens the game a bit. Do you know, it gets people down there. But honestly, they've got some great young kids down at London. I'm not lying to you. Like Langos, when I was there, Langos was doing all the youth and he was giving them it and asking him there's some very good athletes down there. Like, they just need that bit more coaching because there's a lot of rugby union down there. So there's potential, do you know, like... As I said, there's London scholars. Um, I think they start to do a little bit with London Broncos as well now. You know, try and mix them in, do a few training sessions and stuff. But there's a lot of kids now on a night time because I, I was doing a little bit as, as well down there with uh, a few of the youth teams. You know, when I was injured and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, th I think there's definitely potential. And there's definitely some good players down there. So that's that's one team I wanted to kind of get your perspective on in terms of the necessity for Super League. Mm. You've also played up in Cumbria. Now yeah. we love Cumbria, me and mm. Wag. Like yeah. you know, going up there, seeing all Maris, Great guys, eh? It's just brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on 
Cumbrian Super League? Do you think we need a Cumbrian team in Super League? Would you join the teams to make a Cumbrian team, or is that just a no go up there? I, personally, I think like because they're all good mates. They all yeah. swap teams every year. One might play at Workington last year, uh, one year, then Whitehaven, then they're at Barrow. So to be fair, they all do swap about teams up there. The one year they're at that team, then they're at that team. I don't see why they, they couldn't all go together. I know it's like it was just you could put OK and OFC together, which again I think, you know, look how big it makes it. You know, in that stadium, yeah. filling it every week. But that, I had a whole person, so I, them were passionate about the whole. That's why they want to keep apart. And the same with Cumbrian teams, they're that passionate. They want to keep apart, do you know. And again, they've got some very, very good players up there. But they all work at the nuclear plants, don't they? And they earn good money, and they're not too fussed about playing Super League. Some of them, so it's it's more about making a living for your family than you know. Rugby's not a career that lasts forever, is it? So no. No, that's I, what they look at. I've had the beauty of coaching uh, in Cumbria, Mary mm-hmm. Port Wofford, like I mentioned before. And there's some raw talent even in the junior setups up yeah. there. So oh. it'd be nice for that pathway for them if if they were obviously they can play work at oh. uh, Whitehaven, but yeah. It'd be nice to have a Super League club like yeah, Kyle K- Moore and all the Cumbrian lads are always shouting for a Cumbrian team and James Donaldson yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, to, to get up there. Some big, some big players up there as well, some good athletes. You know, we um, Last year, obviously, when I was at Whitehaven, um, we, we, we trained against some of the um, the amateur teams on a night and they're giving us it and that, you know, they've yeah. got some talent up there. I'm not even lying, there's some really good teams up there, some good players. So, how yeah. good how good is that for a game for the, mm. for a team like inviting yeah. the amateur club the grassroots yeah, we do all to time, train yeah. against them yeah it was Charlo like I said uh, Gary Charlton great bloke uh, as again I don't know if you really know him but um, it, a tough guy you know old school yeah. and um, yeah we had co- playing against amateur teams and that you know just, just you know on a, on a Friday night doing ball schools and that and that I was impressed with quite a few of them to be fair let's get into the honesty box because we're just going to go through a quick fire give us a few answers What's your biggest fear, that is? Yeah, I, I've had to think about this because I haven't really got many fears, you know. I just kill it. I, I just, yeah, well, <laughs> it's confident. Do you know what? I'm just, people who know me know I'm laid back. I, I'm just, I aren't really bothered about all, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen, you know, yeah. but I, I won't lie to you. My biggest fear, I don't think I could ever get in a helicopter. I just don't know why. I just can't. I just think once them flaps go, there's one way and that's that way, do you know? <laughs> I, that, I think that's probably my biggest fear. I've had a few nightmares about it, do you know? But other than that. Um, this one, uh, the biggest secret or something people don't know about <coughs> Jamie Fackery. Yeah. I know a lot of people know a lot about you, facts, because <coughs> you can tell a story, but what do you reckon our listeners, our viewers, won't know anything about? I'm not too, like... like What's your passion I, I can't outside tell you some, of I can't, I can't tell you some of my secrets because, you know, I get a lot of people in trouble, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know if many people know that. Like, I, I, obviously, I come from a gypsy background. You a know, gypsy lad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, my um, dad's side. You know, all, all, all gypsies and that. So, um, yeah, my gypsy. So I didn't know I'm that. A, I'm a traveller, yeah. mate. I didn't know traveller. That. traveller. Yeah. Jamie Jumbo. That's why I'm mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, used uh, a, I used to have a ponytail. <laughs> what's your greatest achievement on and off field? Obviously, my greatest achievement on the field is obviously um, playing for my country. There's no bigger accolade than that, is it? Yeah. You know, obviously, and, and like I say, that day walking out in that Challenge Cup final, when we won the Challenge Cup final, yeah, I just can't describe the feeling. Them who've played them know what it's all about. And yeah. Just, just, just the feeling you get, you know. And obviously, again, not many people know that, but I've got a couple of kids, <laughs> you know, like, they're not in limelight, but um, yeah, obviously my kids as well off the field, you know. He's got, your son's got more followers than you. I know, he's up to 15,000. I don't know why, but <laughs> it does say I'm his dad, so that's... Um, <laughs> so awesome. To get the followers up. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned uh, Steve Kearney and yeah. uh, Tony Smith as mentors. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else, particularly over your career, facts that has been a real mentor in your career? I just think in the early days, uh, Dave, Dave Plan, you know, give me that kick up ass. Like, sorry. Yeah. Um, we had, um, like, we were like more mates because I used to live with him sometimes as well, but he was a lot older than me. Um, yeah. And um, it... We, we we had fallouts. He sent me on loan to different teams, you know, because it got like that. But he wanted best of me, and like obviously, once we won the championship final, the one that is in Super League for his ground wasn't big enough or whatever. He, he he paid the way to make sure I got into Super League, you know, which you know I'd be always grateful for him for, for that. Um, but again, he he was a tough guy, and it, it, I looked up to him quite a lot. To be fair, who was your hero, Fax? Uh, my hero. Well, we've, we've talked about this. It's me, innit? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, I wasn't joking. But um, I don't, I don't, like I said, I didn't really watch rugby when I was younger. No. So I don't, you know, I, I didn't really watch rugby. We so. spoke about your toughest opponent. Uh, mm. You mentioned Gaz Carvel and, and different stuff. But your funniest rugby league story facts. Your funniest yeah, rugby got, league you've story. Got, you've got so many stories. We've got facts. loads more yeah. questions I'll coming just, up for you. Facts, I'll just say um, when we was, um, I'm on here, yeah, when um, we. 
on the 2007 we went to um, uh, Newcastle races obviously it got it got a bit messy you know um, we're drinking up there with Lee Dry Nose we had a box they got us a VIP box and stuff you know um, and um, I'm with Lee Spiff at side at field um, chatting some girls up. I was chatting girls up um, I was single then I think yeah well and um, a number I would start showing off and uh, there's a horse at 100 to 111 uh, it's my mum's birthday I said, I said to these two girls I put 20 on that I walk away with a grand or something I put 20 quid on it dropped in 1380 quid <laughs> <laughs> like Lee Smith jumps on my back, giddy as all, runs straight upstairs to our boy, saying, Well, I've just won a hundred to one. Like, and I was saying, Oh, so no one's gonna win it, it's you. And then that way it started getting rowdy, just like you know, you know, real drunk and that. And then way oh man, straight away my my car on both singing songs. I come out with um Tanzi. Um why, why you been going um cabbages on bottom of your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> and it kicked off then and he's like, um, you get stabbed for that for saying stuff like that around my end. So I went over to thinking I'm getting a cuddle off him. Uppercutted me. And I, <laughs> well, fine, do you know what? Someone's just put that on Twitter. Someone's put that on Twitter to ask that question. Yeah, yeah. I'll find and it. Then, uh, and then that were it, a big brawl started. But it was all fun and games. It was yeah. all mates afterwards. But, uh, Michael Oxley. Michael Oxley. <laughs> evening, gentlemen. And it, he's, put, he's asked about that. He's asked about that. Yeah, yeah I'm, sing, I, I'm singing Jordan's got green teeth or something. I walk up back at bus out of city. He's throwing them up front at me. I'm like, <laughs> come and give me some love. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm known for having teeth jokes and bad breath jokes. Do you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that's that, that's a good one. If you could change one thing in the game today, what would it be? Yeah, I'd definitely bring the, the shoulder charge back, mate. You know, they've had it in game for 100 years. You know, it, it, you know, just in life, just not even with rugby, like, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to say that, you're not allowed with this, you know. You need that shoulder badge, don't you? You need that, you know, that, that bang. Would you bring it Ju back, Wag? Uh, yeah, we, we spoke about it yeah. every, every every week. Yeah, and yeah. yeah I, I mentioned last time I've lost teeth from uh, Adam Milner yeah. again. I'll yeah. mention you again. Mm -hmm. I've lost teeth. Do you know what? We shook hands at the yeah. game. I went to the dentist, got them sorted. <laughs> is what it is. It's a story. We'll laugh about it when I see him now. And that's yeah. rugby league. That's that it? respect. Yeah, 100%. On the field, you might come off the field, you might get stretched off, you might get yeah. shook hands. Yeah. You, you move on. That's the respect we've got. Yeah. It's brutal, right? On that field, it's physical, it's mentally tough. But do you know what I love about rugby league, oh. Simo? When you step off that field, right, you'll shake hands, yeah. you, you'll have a beer, and it's done. But when you're on that field, it's battle. Yeah, it's battle. Yeah, it's true. Battle you, you got you don't feel to hurt each other to to see who's yeah. the best, to go up against the best, to see if you're better than the best. Why take all that away? You know, and that that shoulder barge and that line speed, getting off, whacking someone. It, it, I think it's part of games. You know. You know, it's just it's just life in it. You know, there's a lot of worse things that can happen to you in life, but it is what it is in it. But love it, mate. I love it. Right, let's get a few more questions from the viewers. We've got a few tonight. Big thank you to everybody watching. Please, please, please follow us all at Kick Rugby. So it's at C I K Rugby. Uh, tune in on YouTube, on Facebook, on on Twitter. We're all over at the moment. Over ten thousand people watched us last week, Wagger. 10,000, it's good. Yeah, awesome. Good and start. I thought Derek were unbelievable and it, it <laughs> carried on. It carried on on Twitter and, and the yeah. banner. And do you know what, Simo? It wasn't wrong. Lewis Turney. Lewis Turney, good yeah. signing. Good signing, Derek. Good signing. And Very there's been signing. a few more signings in the game, haven't there? We're also going to get tonight the uh, three questions that were like the best last week. Yeah. I'm going to pick one. You can pick one and North can pick one. Yeah. So the one I'm going to pick is the 10... Uh, P guess in the box. Who would his ten sporting guests be in his box? I don't know who answered the question, but that that's going to win a prize. Uh, there were three prizes Derek offered up, so I'll pick one each. So Wagga can do one in a bit, and you can do one. Give us some questions for tonight, though. Right, we've got a question in from uh, Louis Blenkinsop on <sighs> Twitter. <laughs> His face already. <laughs> Do you know him, facts? He says, <laughs> <laughs> it says. It's not going to go down well. Um, ask him about the times he went round Hull pretending to be Danny Tickle on nights out. <laughs> that is not true. Someone came up to one night and says, Oh, good game last night, Danny. I went, Cheers. I could just, I just couldn't be bothered saying I'm Jamie because I got it that many times. I go, Oh, are you Danny or Jamie? You, you do you look similar. Up. Do you know what I mean? But I'm a better player than Danny, so it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Let's talk about the relationship you and Danny Tickle had, yeah, because yeah. that's what rugby league's about. Yeah, we obviously we met each other. We're obviously, at Halifax Blue Sox. He yeah. was 15. I was, I was a baby. We, we worked together, you know. Like as soon as we, we met each other, we were like best friends. You know, we did everything together. We had motorbikes together. We literally uh, had parties together. <laughs> yeah. um, and then obviously we went um, to America on training camp in Jacksonville, and I remember sat on, uh, playing with him. You could hear people whispering, saying, "They're twins. They're twins." Do you know what I mean? But we won, obviously. I'm better looking. Um, and, um, 
Yeah, and uh, as I say, we've been mates ever since. And you asked me if I spoke to him and that. And yeah, I first time in this morning, about three in the morning, drunk. Um, <laughs> we had a good conversation. Um, How is he? Is he going around again, Tix? Um, he's not sure. He's been offered deals. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's like Wags. He's, yeah. he's in good shape. And that looks he's a very himself. good player, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good man. Real good goal kicker. He runs a real nice line. And he's a genuinely great guy. Do you know, another, another great guy like we talk about. Um, He's um, yeah, he's working at the moment. Uh, he's look, he's, he's like looking after you, you, young offenders and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a night and stuff, and that he's, he's doing all right. What else we got, Northy? Um, this one comes from Pete Burrows saying, ask him about the time he started the Red Hill Riot. The Red Hill Riot. The Red Hill Riot. Oh God, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember now. Yeah, I'm Pete Burrows. Good lad, Pete. Hey, Pete. Um, yeah, obviously I'll, I'll play for Lotton Raiders. I've got my dad's got the video. Oh, it's mental. And um, <laughs> someone starts or something. Is it Bull? You might even know him from Cass. Um, and um, they, they all like, there's like, we played Ponty, Pontifact. Uh, what, what, Ponty, yeah, we played someone in Pontifact anyway. And um, I, I, some smack made some smack, so I just hit someone and that way it all kicked off. They all had big beads and that way, like 15 real skinny. <laughs> the full team comes in, and then I'm like, I, like, just, there's about eight of them on me just kicking crap out of me. And then all the, all the, all the, um, all the families come in and join in as well. So my dad's filming it. So he's got it home on video still. So all the all the fields just fighting me. It's, it's really scary. It's really scary. Yeah. Root back the biff. And apparently all that was my fault. <laughs> yeah. But, I've, got, uh, I've got to mention this guy, Adam Atkinson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can get a mention. Ask him who needs the most toilet roll to wipe their teeth <laughs> and who does the best cheesecake fats. Oh, bless him. <laughs> he's pinch- got it in. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's pinching my jokes, and he, you know what I mean? I always say, wipe your breath. No, if someone speaks to me on that, I, and like sometimes I just go like that. <laughs> you brush your teeth today. <laughs> no, like, ju- just as a mess about, but yeah, his, uh, Mrs. makes a fantastic cheesecake. So, uh, and thanks for Christmas Day. It was uh, lovely. There you go. Got it in. What else we got? No, I Give us a couple more. Uh, one from KJ Grayson that came in on Instagram. What's the best dressing room you've been a part of? Oh, good question. Very good. The best dressing room. I don't know, mate. Wagga, we had some good movies, didn't we, at Cass? Yeah, yeah. So, me, you, Definitely. Knuckles, and just there's some pranksters there, weren't there? Yeah. You know, that was a good one. But I've got to say all as well, you know, like getting to them finals. And, mate, we were just playing Cass till five in the morning on the day of the grand final uh, when we won it. Wow. About 10 of us, because we couldn't sleep. We were just too excited. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know, when you're real excited and you just you, you, you just can't sleep on that and you're buzzing on that. But um, I had some, I'm just saying before, we waggers, obviously we struggled as a team. Um, it was a bad year for Cass that year, wasn't yeah. it? But I think the, the bond we had in that team, mate. The bond and the yeah. camaraderie. I mean, Knuckles, yeah. uh, we oh, talk God. about him. Craig Greenall, proper Good lad, tough, him. physical. Oh, he came from all play, some of his best rugby simo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he loved the lads. We we were still young then. Yeah, yeah. We used to stay at his. Um, yeah, I did yeah. And the Mad Monday. This is Andy Lynch with a trickster in, in, yeah. in the Casper yeah. camp. He used to chop, just chop your uh, <laughs> chop your sock yeah. end of your socks off. So you put your socks uh, end of train and they'd be gone. He'd chop chop your undies off. Oh, everything, he'd, he'd, everything. He'd do everything to you. Lynch, Andy Lynch. You by wouldn't far. think it, would you? You no. wouldn't think it. Either. Right, quiet, right, quiet. Yeah. And then just, right. things would happen. Right, sneaky. So what we did. Me and Johnny Etworth were really good mates with Nux, yeah. and I felt really bad. I'll just tell a short story. Yeah. And we, we, we got his key cut. So we got Knuckles' key cut. <laughs> and he used to love his old G-Star gear, <laughs> did Nux. He used to wear G-Star all the time. So we used to go shopping in Wakey, Knuckles come back with G-Star, loved the new pair of jeans. Yeah. So we got key cut, we give it Lynchy, <laughs> and Lynchy were going in his house every day and nicking clothes out of his house. <laughs> Nicking like <laughs> pairs of jeans and like his knuckles that like, went through three irons. And we were all like there, like thinking we met, we did we couldn't tell him because he's yeah. hard as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we did at the end of the season, we brought a big bag of clothes, Craig Greenall's clothes, right? <laughs> and I did a bit. Oh, we were we gonna kill him. Well, we stitched him up again because we we, we nicked his uh, we nicked his bat phone. He used to call it because knuckles were single over here and different stuff. And uh, we 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 pretend. <laughs> me and Epi pretended we were a girl so we've organised for Knuckles to meet this girl in Kipux oh, yeah, 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 yeah. we, we all drove up remember that we're all, remember we're that. all in car yeah. filming it Knuckles <laughs> in car he's texting she says she's not turned up like I said just stay in there mate she might turn up <laughs> we videoed it everything yeah, put, I remember that Mad Monday didn't we we, yeah, we, I remember we it. put it on TV yeah yeah mate oh god it. did I run <laughs> <laughs> did I run <laughs> Knuckles anyone knows Craig Grew he's hard isn't he yeah, we just yeah. ran didn't we because we stitched him up we nicked yeah. all his clothes we done yeah. that <laughs> felt a bad mate but there were times we've had yeah mate they were funny then. I, I remember, I remember that now. times can you remember it yeah I remember that it came over the other year didn't I I went for yeah. a drink with him when um 
which is it Sean who because uh, Figgy Ryan Hudson had uh, a TT but he bought it from Germany so yeah, left hand side, drive left so hand drive, yeah. we nicked his car yeah. <laughs> videoed it going reversing through McDonald's drive through <laughs> <laughs> getting all yeah, coffees I'm, in I remember that car with the side uh, drive yeah Right. Some good times. Yeah, they right. were. Right, it's time now, boys, to go into a bit, a bit of position specific. Right, yeah. into the prop, so into your mind, because you've got real insight, paying over twenty years mm. in that position in the middle, and want you to talk a bit about the art of being a prop and what you feel like are the most important qualities for that position. Because we've seen some young lads coming through now. From a wise old Ed, what mm. advice would you give any young player out there or any coach? What are the real core qualities, in your opinion, yeah. to be a successful prop? Well, it's changed a bit now. Obviously, when I played, um, when I played, as I was, when I was uh, just starting out on that, I just wanted to run as hard as I could, yeah. not get tackled, and then uh, try and play ball as quick as I could. You know that that, yeah. that was my job then. Um, but but then again, I was always fighting it tackle. I did, I was one of them that couldn't be told what to do. Do you know? Yeah. You stuck to a game plan. I was running down all the side of the field. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Facts run over there. No, I've run down there. That's it. I'm getting shouted at, bollocked at. Then I'm arguing with players on the field. Then I, <laughs> do you, do you know? reckon that went against you in certain clubs and certain coaches? Yeah, that well, you didn't keep to structure. Yeah, well, yeah, it did because I, obviously I, I got told a few times. But when I came to Leeds, another good thing, Tony Tony Smith liked playing off the cuff and that, yeah. and he let me do like basically. Well, he gave me like a bit of a free reign, you know. So. Because I've always had the offload, and I had, yeah. you know, that bump on offload. So they used, and I had Rob Burrow and uh, Dan Maguire, two of the best support players in the game, just follow me about. I, I, I'd flick some balls out sometimes. I should have flicked out, and, and, and they've gone straight, for, you know, they just caught yeah. them. And then I've played at other teams where they, they ain't, I ain't got that quality when Rob and, and uh, Danny flick the ball out and look to right. I looked at eightfold, you know. Do you think that they're, they're the best two you've played with, two players? Yeah, they, they are, to be fair, it, 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 in that position of wise. But obviously, Richard Horn, again, he was another support yeah. player like 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 Mags a bit, you know. And obviously, Richard Horn could play fullback as well, you know. Um, but yeah, the, as I said, the two quality players, you know, and it's proved over the years, you know, with, with how well they've gone in it. Um, what's, what's this is the question I really want you to go in depth with. What's the secret to having a long career? Well, I'd say, like, <laughs> do you know what? I was, I was, I've been thinking about this question, but I, I don't know what it is. You know, like some people just get lucky, don't they? Because um, I can't say, don't go out drinking, don't do this, don't do that. Because you've done it all. Because I literally, I, mean. I was going out seven days a week when I was playing, and that's that probably my downfall, do you know? You was, say it's your downfall you, uh, in terms of what you could have achieved yeah, yeah, because, quality wise. Because coaches know I was going out and doing what I wanted to do. and these curfews at 10 o'clock. Do you have regrets about that? Oh, mate, I'm good. Yeah, of course I am. You know, I when you look back on your career, yeah, what do you regret? Just being a fool. <laughs> do you know? Nah, just, you know what? I can say I want because I'm single, but chasing birds, you know, being the lad's lad, um, not knuckling down because people always say, you didn't even train hard, you didn't do this, but you, you got to the top. Imagine if you'd have trained hard, yeah. what, stayed you, in them nights. Mate, I was going out if, four, if five you could say, week. If you could now talk to your 15-year-old self, yep. there'll be a lot of young kids no, watching this, what would you say? What would I say? <sighs> yeah, like I say, I just knuckled down. And I'm, I'm known for, but I, I can't, I've always got to have the last word. Don't be having the last word. <laughs> Just, do you know what? I think I'd say, like, speak to like a JP or someone, you know, a Gaz, a Gaz Ellis, you know, a, a Cine, you know, one of them true pros, because they are true professionals. I was just, a, I was a clown, but I had something about me, you know, like, I don't know if I had the hunger still or what, but I never wore one of them. I want one of them dedicated players, if you know what I mean. Yeah. After training, I was thinking, oh, my texting today, or oh, I'm after to go see, or what time I'm off out or who can I get out do you know it won't, yeah. it won't, I want thinking rugby 24-7 do you know like Cine, you'd see him after training kicking a ball and just doing some you know extras you'd see me running off at field as quick as I could and jumping in the car and doing what I needed to do do you know Yeah. and then I think back I think you know what <laughs> if I got to where I got to where I got to so play for Great Britain and win all, Challenge Cups all, yeah just if I look back at what I've done it's, 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 it's quite mind blowing really to say that like I say I want I want to train, I want this, I want that, you know, I want really, really dedicated, you know. But you live and learn, don't you? It's, we can't all be true professionals, we can't all be. Do you, well, do you believe the characters are going out of the game a bit, facts when you're talking about? <clears throat> obviously, um, it's still, obviously, because I've played in low leagues for the last few years, yeah. I don't really know it's Super League anymore, but um, I know it's, it, I, I speak to, obviously, I'm still friends with quite a few Super League players, you know, I hang around with a few and stuff, and I don't think it's as easy as it used to be, you know, it's a bit more um, stricter now, do you know? Back in the day, you could get away with a lot of stuff. You know that one. Yeah. You know? So I don't really know what the banter's like and that now, you know, like to white one, mate. It were, man it were mental at one point, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, they were good days. <laughs> <laughs> they were good days. Yeah, I man. believe I played, similar to facts, we played in both areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 
it, we, we played in the old school. You you go out after a game on a Sunday. You'd, you'd have Monday club on the Monday. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You, exactly. You'd get flogged on the Tuesday. You sweat it out. You'd have fir- uh, yeah. Thursday off, Wednesday off, and then you you, yeah, you true. won it. Now, and that's what happened. And, and then drinking, it went all it's, professional, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, now it's drinking bands and and that all the time. You can't drink for a week and you can't do all that. But I think sometimes that's what brings a team together. That team we had in two or five, it was full championship players like yeah. Bruffy, Whitehead. I I just come out of from Munslick to Halifax, then to all. Do you know? Uh, sorry, Cast, then all. Do you know? It had it just had a team full of players that was literally were all drink, alcoholics. Was out all the time. <laughs> I, my team, you know, I can say it now, it was ten or fifteen years ago, and it we, we was literally out every night. But that team, we had that bond. Do you know what I mean? When we turned it on, we could turn it on. Do you know? Like um, that, that's what I mean. It brought you all together, didn't it? All yeah. mates, mates. Yeah. And now I don't know. You have all your little groups all over, don't you? Do you know? It has changed a little bit. What did you love about playing at Middle? What's what? What did you really love about it? It was weird, you know. <laughs> It's, I just loved it. I just want to to beat my number. You won't believe this, but before every game, mate, I was literally spewing and being sick and really? so nervous. Honestly, yeah, but I didn't. But I didn't that. Yeah, gipping yeah. in, I was that. Yeah. In, in toilet, mate, all the time. Like, you know, when you go try to burp and be sick and gipping that. I, I, I won, mate. I, I, I don't know if it was like why I was so nervous f- thinking of failure. Like, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be able to do that tackle or make that run. Or But for every game, mate, I used to feel sick, dizzy, thinking I can't. Sometimes I make myself that nervous. I couldn't play. You know, when you get that nervous and. Yes, yeah, weird feeling. Um, but um, yeah, it is a weird feeling. Who do you enjoy watching now? Facts in your position. I mean, you mentioned a couple of old lads. Yeah. Um, as well. Yeah, Kate and them are going well. Do you know? Yeah. I've been impressed with them. To be fair, do you know? And again, I see him at the same gym as me. You know, uh, David Lloyd and stuff. And I think you know what? That wasn't me when I was younger. Good on him. Do you know? It, it, they are doing the right thing now. You know, Jordan Lane and them. They've got some good young players down there. And, you know, I don't take a lot of interest in Super League these days. I do watch it. Are you, you a know? fan of sport? I do love rugby league, mate. To be, you know, yeah. I do love it. But I sometimes watch it and it gets me frustrated, you know, and for pen- these little soft penalties and stuff, you know, like referees are giving penalties away for that and this and that. And I'm thinking, you just, you just don't want to watch it. Yeah. You know, it frustrates you a bit. But um, yeah, yeah, I do love the game, do you know. What's, what advice would you give to other players coming towards the end of your career? Because yeah. it's, um, I know a few lads transitionally have really mm. struggled. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've kind of kept playing, and yeah, you're probably yeah. doing, you know, you're settling into a career now. Yeah. But you're still looking for other options, and it's yeah, like, what it's would true. you, what advice would you give to other players coming towards back end of the career? Well, I'll tell you what I messed up on. I should have, uh, like, as as a, maybe as I got to like 26, 27, looked at like maybe going to after school after school courses or stuff, you know, just yeah. getting something back here, which I never did. Like I say, oh, I was thinking about well, my next session or we want to meet, you know. I'd, I'd look at things like that and like like I say with rugby league I've just always had an opportunity where I've met that many friends and coaches over the years I've just had that odd call and been lucky enough to say oh would you just come and do one years with us bring young lads through or yeah. I've, I somehow always fell on my feet like that I didn't plan to keep on playing until I was 40, 41 do you know like I spoke to Gary Charlton the other week and he says look you can still come if you want for next year um, Unslip no um, uh, Whitehaven Whitehaven yeah. it's, too, it's, it's a far drive on that obviously they're doing well in the championship would you ever um, go Unslip? Well, I started on Saturday, didn't I? Yeah, so I mean, would you come full circle? No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you just can never say never or not, can you? You know, <laughs> I don't want to play at the minute. You know, I'm not missing yeah. it. I aren't missing it. I'm not missing training. Um, I aren't. But then once it starts, you get a little twitch, <laughs> don't you? You know, you go to you go watch one of your mates play. You think oh, I could still do it. Tell us about Keithley because you've got a couple of real good mates there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, t- 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 Miller, Jack Miller. Miller's got about twenty-five questions yeah, we'll, to fire we'll, in. We'll, yeah. we'll do, we'll do the, uh, we'll do some questions. Yeah, Jack, Jack Miller questions. Yeah, Jack was at mine last night, so he's, he's been sick all uh, the way home. So uh, not to drop him <laughs> off. Uh, a late sesh, but um, yeah, you know what? Keithley have signed some outstanding players for next year. Scott and Morel. Scott I was buzzing about him last night. Um, I was just saying, what a player Scott is. I'd love to play with Scott because he, he's got that enthusiasm. He's got, he's got that, he's got that to get you up in the game. Would you go you to running. Keithley next year? Mate, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good friends with owners, and I could have stayed last year. Um, obviously, good friends with Reese and that, and the owners at Keithley, mate, they're bang on. I told you you're gonna have to come down and um, come to a couple of games and that. Yeah, with 100%. the pleasure of time, mate. Uh, you, they, they welcome you with open arms, and I think they're gonna go real well next year. Um, as I say, at the minute, I don't, I don't, I ain't missing it. But um, who knows? You know what I mean? Uh, hit that gym after Christmas. See how big I can get. I mean, who knows? Eh? Oh, we've got loads of plans for uh, content. It's King Rugby, aren't we, Wagger? We're going to yep. try and bring back Wagger's game day for next year. Mm-hmm. We're uh, looking for some sponsors as well. So anybody yep. out there who are interested in uh, getting... We had 10,000 views last week. It's only going to grow. Third show in. We've had some great guests. Derek Beaumont, Leon Price. Um, obviously, the legend, Thaks tonight. And then next week, Luke Gale, Lee Drano's captain. Week after Paul McShane confirmed. 
So it's three weeks of very, very good guests. Obviously, no one's as good as that. But oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good, though, to get an ex-players who, who, who's played the game. He might not be retiring, yeah. but he, he's been there and done it, and he's, yeah, he's representing GB, won a chance cup. But, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good to have Gail on next week, talk about leadership, yep. captaincy, uh, and Paul McShane. Yeah, I was uh, going to speak to Gail I was going to speak to Gail about asking where he got his air transplant, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll ask him now. <laughs> So let's, let's get let's get through some questions before we finish up and wrap up tonight. Yeah. Right, uh, speaking of Jack Miller and Keithley, uh, question come in. Ask him about the drainage system on Keithley's field. <laughs> Go on then, what's, what's this one? Drainage system. It was a dumb moment. I don't know, like, it, like we trained on it one day and it was absolutely boggy as all. Then the next yeah. day it was, it was, like, perfect. And I went, oh yeah, they've got a draining system. I, I must have, I, someone just, it was an, an head fart. It like... I said, oh, yeah, they've got underground heat, you know, soil or something. They aren't. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> you know, like, and then like, it just all kicked off from there. Um, is it? I've got a funny story, actually, Keith. Cool. Like, um, it was all in a circle. They didn't really, really all know me then. Like, uh, Josh Liner, I think he was captain. I'd been there like 10 years. And I walked in. It was all about match money. And he went, yeah, we'll yeah. get 250 a game. I went, 250, I won't get out of bed for that one. 650. And they like, it looked at me real funny. You're like, but I was joking, you know what I mean? And like, everybody just looked like that. But, you know, you had to be there at yeah. picture moment and that. But, He'll tell you about it. It's just, it's just hilarious. <laughs> just, you have to be there. Who's some of the funniest blokes you've met on your journey? As I say, some well, real characters. As I say, like Jack Miller's one of them. Like, yeah. I, I wanted you to meet him tonight because he's absolutely just, just mental. Do you know, <laughs> he's a mental one. Um, Wag is a mental one. You know, I've got to say a Wag. Even Razin is there, one he? mental oh, one. He? Yeah, he were a character um, back in his day. He, he was full on, wasn't he? Yeah, he was full on. I don't know. Most people, I don't know if they're like. They're quite shy, but then once having the drink, they just come out of the shells, you know. Jordan <sighs> Thompson. Oh, what was the feel? Tom, well, he's, <laughs> he's the best after a couple same, of drinks. Same with Tickle, mate. He's like a, a shy little kid, and then get three bees in him, mate. He's got his top off. He's what was the story? His eyes in. It goes bright what red, was the story? <laughs> I remember a story years ago. We Tickle with a motorbike up motorway or something. No. <laughs> you can tell us the story. Yeah, no, it, no. I went to Wigan with him. We got motorbikes. <laughs> He jumped off one, it went in a pond, he left it. I went, you're not leaving that in pond, I'll take it. And I put it in the back of my car on my own. But way am I bumped into someone in front of me? And I had this cross in the back of it as well. Do you know? It was my dad's van, I'll never forget it. I don't even know if he knew I took it. Um, and that, and that, that's the story. He, 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 he tell me how good he's on these bikes and that. It flew off of a thing and just left it in a pond. He was going to leave it like a two grand bike. <laughs> I was straight no, pond. No, I was straight pond for it. Is it still a tit sunbed stick? Oh, yeah, man. I love the sunbed. You used to go on sunbed all the time. Yeah, but it doesn't go brown. It just goes bright pink. <laughs> yeah, that's what it does. Before every game, it was just yeah, bright red, wasn't it? Sunbed, haircut. Then yeah. it go like that with his traps. <laughs> <laughs> Not with his game prep. Sunbed. Yeah. Pre game. Yeah. What's the other questions, Dorothy, to finish off tonight? Uh, this one comes from John Boy four three seven on Instagram. Uh, since retiring from the greatest sport in the world, what's life been like? And that's from a Hull FC fan. Yeah, well, um, obviously I'm still living in Hull. I'm um, I'm building luxury caravans. Um, they are quite nice to be fair. Do you know, I've, I've, I've seen them tonight. Nice right? out there. Um, I'm doing that at the moment. Um, and obviously I was still playing at Whitehaven until this year. So obviously with a furlough. Um, obviously we've been on furlough, so we haven't, we haven't played. I think my last game was at home against Jewsbury. Um, so yeah, building caravans and again, just um, I talked about before. You know, like you shouldn't go out and drink and that. You know, I'm still like to socialise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> trying to gym when I can. Obviously, um, the David Lloyd's over the road, so I'm, I'm in there. You know, normally, but um, w again with furlough being on, it's it's, it's it, I'm missing it. You know, the gyms are up and then they're closed. And other than that, not a lot. Just um, just get, uh, just getting stopped by you, fans. Yeah, you yeah. your house <laughs> proud as well. They new pad. Yeah, just bought a new well. just bought a new house on um, Kingswood uh, in Hull. Um, yeah, it's nice. So I've just been decorating and um, trying to put my TV on straight. Cause um, this is another story. My, my friend and um, my friend helped me move in last Friday, and it started off real well. With, um, obviously, we got the beers out and that. It started off real well. Everything was going real good and straight. And then later as the night went on, all the pictures, uh, all the pictures started going wonky. <laughs> My curtain pole was on like that, I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> I looked at my telly, my telly was 15 mil out, and it was like that. And then my TV on my wall, I looked like that to pull it, and it, it, I mean, it's well, it fell off, it come off the wall. <laughs> and I said, you know what I mean? Like, that's how bad it got that night, and then. <laughs> well, I've had a good Christmas, because I follow oh. you on Instagram, no, yeah. and yeah. there's pictures of Baileys with every meal, and, yeah. and whiskey, and, no. and, and beers. But Christmas, good, good time yeah, here, Have you had a good Christmas? We've got very good, mate. I've drunk six bottles of Baileys in two days. It's, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bottle of JD last night, yeah. Well, I haven't been to bed yet, but um, it's been all right. <laughs> What else have we got? No, they give us a couple more. Uh, another one from his friend Jack Miller. Um, <laughs> He's on fire, his Miller. Um, 
how much them smart price joggers you wear for training <laughs> <laughs> and how many different colours do you have them in right yeah I got some George tracky bombs for £10 <laughs> mate they're so comfy you used to wear them for bed <laughs> So, um, yeah, so he used to come training. All these lads were in out training gear and that. I just come in a pair of George tracky bottoms. So, again, getting ripped out, ripped out, you know, yeah. everyone take it pee out of me. So, um, yeah, uh, these crappy George pants, you could tell they were cheapos, you know, but comfy, mate. I don't care what I look like. Do you know okay, what I mean? Mate. As long yeah. as I'm putting people through, mate, it didn't bother me. <laughs> uh, really good question from Barks and Spark as well. How do you think the game has changed for props in today's game in comparison to 10 years ago? Yeah, like, I, th I think like 10, 15 years ago, you, it would it was a bit more like run as hard as you can some coaches try and find that offload do a bit of support play yeah. nowadays this is my opinion I might be wrong just just looking it looks like obviously they're going in to, to go down and play the ball quick for the yeah. which I don't blame them you know the, the game has changed over the years do you know but um, I just remember back in the day I think back in the day when I was playing the props was a lot bigger for some big yeah. boys back in the day they look more leaner and faster now do you know it's, it has changed a bit and it wagged the, the, yeah. the props are, like say with knuckles and that two bigger minutes out yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, the, the more minute guy the, the subs are less and that like back in the day when we were playing we had our props at 20 stone Gas Carvel 20, 21 stone you had Dowsy Dowsy yeah. yeah. Tuki mate how good were side sidestep yeah. oh, 20 odd stone mate sidestep boom he had some footwork too yeah. so he, he couldn't yeah. do he couldn't do nah. 40, 50 minutes nah, about 11 <laughs> yeah mate a good player like he's still a good player though isn't he yeah. great guy as well oh, yeah. real bad tuna bear <laughs> um, did though, didn't he? did. I thought you'd be like that. Yeah, but the, 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 the big, they're all athletes, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're all athletes, you know. You look at yeah. them now, but they've well, got to do big minutes. Well, look at Bradford team back in there, props. Oh, wow, oh yeah. my God. Oh, thank you, <laughs> 21 stone, 23 stone, 18 Paul, stone. Paul yeah. Anderson. Anderson, 20, yeah, that's what You I mean, look all, at them now, like big. Bentley Abad, Ollie Partington, Morgan Smithies, mm. Morgan Knowles. Mm. The, the, they no. can do big minutes no. they're athletes aren't they just like lean machines like you say back in the day 20 stone 21 stone now they're all 16 lean strong can do 80s 50s game's 60s game's changing that yeah that's changed mate yeah. any more for any more uh, yes we had a good one from Pete Burrows he says uh, do you wish you had your eyebrows shaved on the way home from France instead of uh, <laughs> sorry on the way to France instead of just before coming home in 96 <laughs> oh, 96, 96. Uh, it says hashtag Ulton tour yeah, that as as again, that's when we've mentioned Rocky, and obviously, yeah. obviously sadly, he's passed away. Rocky was on the tour then. Yes, yeah, so I can't remember. I, I can't remember if I shaved them or if someone else shaved them. Um, but yeah, they definitely went missing. But it, <laughs> my eyebrows are that blonde anyway. When, it, when it's sunny and that, and um, I get a tan, it looks like I've shaved them off. But I am they're still there. They're just real blonde, you know. So weird, but yeah, another good uh, another good memory uh, over in France. It was good that. Wag, tell us a bit about uh, any of the uh, any rugby news this week. So we've got to go, I'll start you off. Rob Burrow, MBE, yep. fantastic. I think um, that he's been recognised for the work that he's done this year, battling M and D and raising awareness and funds. Uh, must be must be tough to watch. It certainly is for me. It blows my mind, and we're going to be doing a bit for him in January, uh, releasing an album that I put together in lockdown. But how, how was, as a former team, uh, how, how did you feel when you when you heard the news about Rob's condition? Well, obviously, I've um, I've I've got a friend who's who, who his close friend passed away of it, so I know straight away what it was. And uh, mate, I was I won't lie to you, mate. I'm a big guy in that, and I, I've I've had a lot of tear, tear nights over it. You know, I'm absolutely devastated for him and his family. You know, you, you will not meet a nicer guy than Rob. Yeah, mate, he's tr truly heartbreaking. And, even when I get a bit um, drunk now and that, and I get mo I, I still think about it and get emotional. I, yeah, I, yeah. I pff, yeah, honestly, I, I sometimes think I wish I could take it for him. I really do. You know, that's how I feel. It's just, you know what I mean. That's how I am. Kev's, so Kev's done what Kev did recently. It's unbelievable, wasn't it? No. The, 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 the what state. kind of guy Kev is, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean, and I think Jonesy mentioned uh, on the documentary he said, if you can get all the medals and stuff, it's about supporting your mates and. Yeah. and Kev always says, I know he'd do it for me. Yeah, and in the 110 percent would, wouldn't it? Yeah, with that blink like that. Yeah, it's all football. Just just for me, Simo, a uh, couple of recent signings. Uh, we spoke, we spoke, didn't we? we? We went through all the teams and the ins, the outs yeah, last, yeah, last week last with week. Derek, and it was good. And, and Derek were right. Wagga were harsh. Wagga yeah. were harsh last week. Clubs are still looking at them. Recruitment drive still going. Uh, and My if they're it. picking them up, <laughs> Eljaya Taylor um, signed at Salford uh, from West Tigers. He was the co-captain of West Tigers, over 180 plus NRL games. So he's wow. a great coup for Salford. Good bit of business for Salford. Yeah. What do you reckon? Tick. Yeah, I think tick. Ticks. 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 Yeah, but I think it'll be good. I love the winger for Salford. The, is it in, in or? Oh, I know. Chris yeah. Inno. I'm just yeah. watching. But that's, he's old school. I like that. Th there'll, be a, there'll be a big be reason good. why he's come in as yeah. well. Pepe's well, done well, hasn't he, since he's gone up there. 
Reese Williams. Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah, Reece. Yeah, Reece, he's Reece, done really well. He's a good player anyway, Reese. He's so, so strong as that to put down. It can, it can finish. Yeah. You'll know about this one as well for Lee's Rhinos. Zane, Zane. Tetevano. Yeah, very wow. good player. Appeared Big. in the last two of the la- well, in the last three NRLs has been in the last two finals. Him. Yeah. So. <laughs> Won it 2018 with yeah. Roosters. So for him, for me, not just for Leeds, yeah. but them two players to come into the Super League, it's only going to strengthen uh, it. Yeah, I, I was surprised to be fair that that he will leave in NRL. It's oh. a massive, massive coup, and I think that is, the sad thing is that Ava's left because yeah. Ava did a real good job for him last, you know, and I'm sure they're going to bring someone else in now. Um, Can you pronounce his surname? Because I've been practicing <laughs> all day. Sem- <laughs> Semu. Language I apologise. I, I, I couldn't see say it. Yeah, see, don't, you oh, me, don't don't no. see you on FNI. See you on FNI. But he, he's a top bloke, ever, and yeah. he'll be uh, sadly missed by the boys. Definitely one of the boys. Him and Brad Dwyer are really close, and Connie. So yeah, yeah. they're gonna and Dono. They're gonna miss him. There's plenty of love going on at the minute. Plenty of love. Goodbyes, oh. goodbyes, goodbyes. But that's rugby league, rugby league family. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's rugby. what it's all about, mate. That's what mate, you miss. It you, you miss your, you miss them. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, mate. Who's been your best mate in the old games? Is it ticks or is it? You know what? I've got low. And you know what? Give us, give us, give us like. Can you give us off the top of your head, your best mates team? So starting at fullback and going through. I know it's hard off the top of your head. Two wingers, centers, scrum halves. Of Fax's best mates. Fax's best mates. Um, fullback. Can't think of them. Um, you played with so many players. I know, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm like, there's like three. Well, like Gibbo, Damien Gibson, he was. <laughs> He would be up there. Yeah, good lads, give go. I'm gonna go. Let me start off with Lee Smith on one wing. Yep. Lee Smith on one wing. Yeah, that's about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard off top of your head because you play yeah. with that many players. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, when I was when I was up, mate, when you get when you sign at a team, you, you you get bonded with with them people when they're there. When you go to your next team, you get bonded with them team. Yeah. yeah. So I'll say like, obviously, Lee Smith was one of good friends. Yeah. Gibbo was one of my close friends. Tansy, Ryan yep. Bailey, you know, we had like a little click at Leeds, you know, where there's four or five, six of us that were just absolutely mental. Yeah. Then, you, then you got your true pros, you know, like I talked about before. Yeah. Obviously, when I was at Hull, there's like me, Kingy, um, Paul Cook, uh, Danny Bruff, um, you know, you got Carvels. Um, then you got then you've got your family people, you know, that again that were real pros, you know, that that, that stick to 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 the plan. And then, like I say, you get your when we're at Cass Wag, me Wag, yeah. Raz, you know. Then you get your your old ones there, do you know what I mean? Then Knuckles looked after his dinner on nights yeah, out and did. stuff. Yeah, so um, like you say, each team you go to, you have that bond. And obviously, when I was at Halifax, that's when I first met Tickle. And yeah, we were like inseparable, do you know? Yeah. We are close mates and we're still close mates now, do you know? We don't see each other as much because obviously he lives in Wigan. I'm in Hull. Um, obviously, I'm a Leeds lad. I don't know why I'm still in Hull, but um, <laughs> if I get a decent job here, I might come home. Um, any offers? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can still model. Onslaught. Um, <laughs> Onslaught is coming back. Uh, JB Fack is coming back to uh, Onslaught, I've called it. Yeah, um, yeah. Play coach. And then, um, <laughs> and then what else? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been at that many teams. It's just so hard, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I went to Australia, and I don't know if you know Richard Pori. No. Um, he's, I don't know if he's at um, Rochdale now or Oldham. Um, I had some good times with him, mate. A little guy, real uh, feisty, little muscly thing. He can fight as well. Could you mention Penky? He's got. He's going. Oh, no, sorry, mate. Penky, yeah. Tickle, uh, mate. What player he's is? Got, is he still Rochdale Penky? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention him because yeah. uh, obviously when I was at uh, Halifax, yeah, me, Penk and Tickle, you know, always together. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we was out um Halifax quite a lot of times in um, Acker fifty p drink on a Thursday night. <laughs> Yeah, Johnny Acapulco. Lawless. Acapulco. <laughs> what yeah. the hell? What a time. I remember that? Yeah, I DJ'd there a few times. Yeah. Back at the Acker. Yeah, I got um. Yeah. <laughs> right, I think yeah. that's about it for tonight. What a great podcast. Yeah, it's been good, mate. Thanks, thank you so much for coming on. You have to come on again this year. 100%. What do you reckon in in uh, percentage wise will Jamie Thackeray back playing? I reckon probably sixty forty back back in action. What do you reckon, yeah. Thax? Like I say, we you know what was what's just we're going on with COVID and stuff. Do you know I would have probably even gone next year if this hadn't COVID hadn't come and stuff, you know. Yeah. Because mate, I, I like my last game before the one we finished with COVID, I played 65 minutes at proper witness away and like witness with an Andy team, you know. Yeah. I played the first 65 minutes and I'm 40 and I'm thinking, oh, no, no, yeah, I might, <laughs> I might do another year. Is it, you know. is, is, think, it is it your... Sorry, I'm, fit, I'm sorry, fitter sorry, than I used it, to be. Yeah. yeah is yeah, it I'm physically, in, in your head, do you still want to play? <laughs> Matt, you know what? Over the years, I had playing at Super League level at the minute, but there's still a lot of good players in championship and it's still physical, do you know? But I think, I think my technique's better in my wrestling, my tackle. I'm more like, back in there, I was I, I was a ball I, I was I was I, I come on to ball I, I come on to ball then I 
Yeah. Now I'm more like trying to do a bit of wrestling and, uh, you know, work tech. I never used to do any stuff like that. I'm Change like, it game. I don't Experience yeah, facts. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you what have you learned to make your job easier over your time? Yeah, we, we, I've just been reading a question when you were in about uh, middle at middle. I learned yeah. to sneak out wide a little bit, you know, like have a breather and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Sean Berrigan when um, it, when, when Barrow played with me, obviously another really good player. Mate, he was a knucker, supposed to be inside me at middle. He used to say to me, work for me, work for me, push me in all the time. I'll never forget it, you know. And that's when I was looking at them questions, laughing about that, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, like I say, when you're playing Super League, it is hard to get out wide because a lot of faster players there's a championship. But in a championship, you can sneak out wide a little bit, you know, mix about a bit. And you've got players that aren't selfish these days. They'll say, look, I'll work for you because they're eager to do well in them low leagues. Yeah. And they want to push this in and go that big harder, do you know what I mean? Do, do you reckon um, that the quality of the game, the players, because in theory you shouldn't really be playing at 41 year old no, or no, yeah. Gaz, Gaz Ellis well, at 40 year old <laughs> yeah. do you think the quality is not coming through as much as it should be no I just think like or is it just the fact you're amazing well we'll talk about that <laughs> no what it is like it's, I don't know like they say over years now people are playing a lot longer or people yeah. are, are living a lot longer and the, the lifestyle's a lot better like back in the day I were eating 20 takeaways a week you know yeah. like you, drinking what you I eat did well, don't you? I eat quite my, my diet these days is a lot better than it you know than it used to be I eat quite well now too like I think I'm fitter now than I was when I was playing Super League really? I, I know I am anyway yeah wow yeah easy like I say when I signed at Whitehaven last year I'd not even trained in two or three months I was literally I hadn't seen any of the players at Whitehaven unfit <clears throat> but I was literally at the front on everything you know and I'd not even really trained for two months three months do you know what I mean so there's only a few that like fitter so it's just weird I don't know if it's what you eat or how, how you look after yourself but um, yeah do you wish you'd done it younger? no of course I do mate I've got a lot of regrets, but you could, it, that, it wouldn't make me then, would it? Do you know, no, no, they all say, no, no. I always, I've had I've this conversation. It's a journey. Uh, it's a journey. It is, isn't it? I, it I, is I say it to mates because I'm still friends with them. I just say, um, I, when I'm a bit emotional and a bit, I says, I, why didn't I knuckle down? And she went, you wouldn't be who you are today if, uh, yeah. if you did all that. Do you know, you wouldn't be that silly guy that back, you know. That never change facts no, in no, my yeah, eyes. Never yeah. change. Well, I don't think I'm a bad guy. Do you know? No, no mate. mate, you're a top bloke. Thank you so much for coming yeah, down. I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed Episode it. three uh, will be live. I'm gonna I'll download the audio tonight. I'll put it up so you can listen to it in the morning on the podcast. It's going well, Waggy. You enjoying it? Yeah, absolutely love it. And when you go back to it, um, content is king. We, we just love rugby league. We're passionate yeah. about it. It's raw. It's live. Yep. Uh, we're getting different guests on uh, and hopefully we can get some sponsorship in because I'd love to go to a game again obviously yep. Covid uh, allowing oh. I'd love to get to, to games because my, my passion my love is getting to games seeing the fans interviewing oh. the fans the players and just showcasing our brilliant game Simone that's what I want to do so if anyone wants to sponsor Wagatoros' uh, <laughs> game, days. game days then I'm free yeah. not a problem right. big shout out to Matty North man behind the camera Danny Tickle. Cheers, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the legend that is Jamie Thackeray, of course. Killing it as always. Cheers, Wagging guys. myself, Alex Simmons. We'll see you next week. Good night. God bless.